Oh, never a dull moment. We are uh, driving around. Went to the barn today. I went with a lot of horses I wanted to go with. Warmed some of the horses up. We had some horses qualifying today. We didn't school anything today because uh, there was 14 qualifiers. Like qualifiers aren't even done yet. It's one o'clock. So it, it's very difficult to warm the horses up properly for a 14 school. You can warm up. The break was at 11.05 this morning. So around 11.15 you can get warmed up and you go out the door at one o'clock. So you're just itching for trouble. Um, so the ones that we were going to go with, obviously I had to apologize to everybody this week. Jason had asked me to put Grace in to qualify and I screwed up. I had a lot going on that particular day, two days ago, as you can imagine. And, um, and I forgot. So we trained Grace at the firm today with LD's Patrick. Now I had to twist James's arm. James didn't want to train LD's Patrick. Oh, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. I said, no, he's going to train. Um, you know, he's not going to win races on memory. You know, these are athletes and they do need to train a little bit. Now, LD's Patrick obviously was great in Miami Valley. That was only 10 days ago. I believe it'll be 12 days, I think, 10 to 12 days for his next start on Monday. Not an easy class either, by the way. So it's not like we were going to go fast. We wanted to go in 2.8, ended up going in 2.10. James said he was throwing his head the whole time. Well, we, we TQ'd him a little bit. There's no need for the horse to be hot. I just want to put a little work into him. Um, so we went a little slower than we were going to actually at the farm. But anyway, those horses... Grace went hard the last three weeks at the schoolers. Backing her up a week isn't going to hurt her, especially since we're in the midst of cleaning out that non-winners of two uh, class so we can move our horses up to the non-winners of three, which will then run into what's next. Um, I'm not going to tip my hand because I, um, I don't know what I'm going to do yet with... Um, with uh, Blue Bayou Dio and Unbeatable Camp. I know a lot of people are like, I can't wait to see them in New Jersey. Well, you might not see them in New Jersey. They have Kentucky. They have lots of racing. I'm not going to send them to, Kentucky, to New Jersey to get their heads smashed in just to say, well, we were there. I'm not going there for a bumper sticker. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, unless we're convinced that uh, we'll be watching the New Jersey racing over the next two weeks, three weeks, um, two weeks, I guess, three weeks, um, the non are two, three, what horses are qualified, what horses will be out. And as I said, we're not going there for a bumper sticker. We're going there to do some damage or we're not going there at all. There's lots of damage to do right here at Mohawk Raceway. So, um, I, yeah, so today we wanted to get the horses trained up. Grace, uh, Grace, I wanted to train up a little bit because... Obviously, she probably should have qualified today. Qualifiers sucked anyway. It was so windy. It was like 40, 50 mile an hour winds. Like crazy. Well, I'll tell you how windy it is. The wind broke the starting gate after Laugh Now's race. Laugh Now's or yes, after Laugh Now's race, they had they had to uh, they had to go back and get. If you look, they changed the starting gate. Broke the pins in the gate. That's how windy it was today at Mohawk. Now, funny story in a minute about that. But uh, for the training. Uh, Grace was fantastic. Eldis Patrick did his work. He's always good. And then the third horse in that set was Crew Chief. Now, Crew Chief is a horse that Steve Palermo had sent here. Obviously, you guys know Steve, who's traveling with me the last three weeks to um, to Miami Valley. Steve owns a number of horses with us. Has some mares that he breeds with with uh, Jeff uh, Jeff Ruck and a number of other breeders. Has horses in London racing with his his longtime friend Steve Bossens, who does a great job. Um, and Steve has some horses with us also. So Steve uh, had sent crew chief up here to us. He's pretty near ready to go. I obviously didn't see him now. I know there was a video shot. I saw Brody shooting a video of us training. So I'm going to ask him uh, if I can have that. And I'll get Kelly to send it out to you. Um, but I know Grace was fantastic. After the mile, we had gone a mile in 210, which is plenty slow for Grace and uh, for Grace and Eldis Patrick. So I let Grace rock for almost a half a mile and she you you think that Blue Bayou deal looked good last night <laughs> wait until we get Grace to the races she feels like an absolute pit bull right now uh, for sure one qualifier if not two isn't she small though? she's very small but she is mighty she is strong uh, both her and Blue Bayou Dio had the same work ethic, the same approach to racing. Kill, destroy, <laughs> merciless, merciless beatings. I love, I love the fact that 
there's no hesitation. Sometimes when horses pass horses, they're like, oh, okay, and they kind of throw it into neutral. And that could be for a number of reasons. It could be good or bad or indifferent. It could be just them being green. But I love the horses that go until you say, stop. <laughs> and those, that, is, that is the mentality that Grace and Blue Bayou Dio bring to the table. It is merciless until it is a stop sign. So um, she was very, very good. Eldis Patrick got a good training mile in. James said, he's throwing his head a lot. And I said, honestly, James, the horse was tranquilized today. He's probably just bored and, you know, not in his zone. He likes to be a bully and grabby. And we just didn't, I didn't want him that way today. So we um, we just went easy with him. Um, and crew chief, I believe Jimmy said was very good. I can't wait to see the video because Brody's been going with this horse. I personally haven't gone with him in a few weeks, and I'm interested to see how he looks. Now, we tried the last half in 1-1 or 102, so a good last half also. So I'm interested to see how those three look. Then we went over to Mohawk. We were in the eighth. So I'm going with babies. We're going to train a little bit tomorrow. There's some that I want to make shoeing changes with that I'm just not going to go with tomorrow. It doesn't make any sense to go with them. I want to make a shoeing change with Merchant Man. I want to make some shoeing changes with a couple of the other horses, so they're not going to go tomorrow. Lady All-Star, I know Kenny and Peg, or maybe you watch these videos or not, I'm not going to go with Lady All-Star. She's just been working really hard, and I know what happens. These my MVP horses, their knees start to get a little sore this time of year because they're so hard on themselves and fast, and she is hard on herself. So probably what will happen is uh, we'll work on her knees and feet over the next week, go easy with her and start her back up. Light work on Wednesday, a little harder work on Saturday. Um, uh, shoeing changes coming. I, I'm, I'm letting my mind work at the wrinkles. What I saw on the track from Merchant Man, I'm going to go back and watch the video from last week a couple of times. See, I know what he's doing. His right hawk probably bothers him a little bit. There was an OCD taken out of that. We had some work done on it, but it shouldn't be bothering him that much. So is it interference? Do we need to change something mechanically? These are questions that I'm asking the other side of my brain uh, for the rest of the day. And I'll come up with what we want to do with him and test him out tomorrow or Monday. But for tomorrow, tomorrow's training, I'm not going to train uh, Merchant Man. There's a number of horses that aren't training. Some coming off that list also that hadn't trained in a week because they were sick. Uh, swinging Senorita, I let her dance along a little bit today. She is sharp as a tack and ready to go, so she's going to go tomorrow. Rosita's Dream, uh, I didn't make any changes, but I'm going to go with him tomorrow. He's going to go. So I'll do a video tomorrow, update you guys, obviously, as I always do, how the horses went. So... As I, was, as I was saying, before I got to the qualifiers, I was going with these horses to try and get a feel of where they're at, what changes I want to make so that we can make them tomorrow. I get over there just in time to go with Laugh Now. It is windy. This horse has been in 2-2. He's an okay horse. Expectations are low for this guy. We have nothing for him in the last Ohio sale. If he's a decent maiden, now winners a two horse at... Uh, oh, he stopped. Now I'm winners a two horse at... Um, London, Flamborough, until we get him really rolling and see what he is, then that's fine with me. I'm perfectly fine with that. The day that he was purchased for 100000 as a yearling, his brother, his sister, none of that matters now. Now it's all about laugh now. So I didn't know what to think. He's in tough today. There are gold horses in there, horses that made six figures last year. He's in, in tough, but I don't want to just take him to the back. I did that in a schooler, and he just pouted the whole time. So I'm thinking... Drop them over into three or four hole, maybe over the front, let a couple go, whatever. Now, keep in mind, the wind is at our face. I go 30 seconds. He's green. He's on the front end and he's pulling up a little bit. And I don't mean he's doing it sour, he just doesn't know what to do. I'm asking him to go on, he go on for a couple of lengths and then he kind of let up and go on and let up and go on and let up. No one's coming. The wind is at our back. And we won a second quarter in 32 and 4. Theoretically, that would be a quarter in like 35 seconds with the wind at, at your face. Only a Mohawk, I think, could you go a second quarter in 32 and 4 in a qualifier with the wind at your back and no one come. So finally, as we get to the far turn, I'm like, we're on Adam. Finally, we got him started back up and he starts to trot on. Trots a last turn, good, opens up a couple lengths, but these are. I kept her whipper stipper. It's a gold horse. Stone cold gold horse. I know they're going to come. You know, 133. Now the wind is in our face. So I need you to judge what kind of a mile that was. This little horse never stopped trotting right to the wire. Never let up. They just went by him. But he come like 29 in a piece into, an, into a pretty strong wind in his face. 
thought it was a very, very good mile for that horse. It's just green. You know, if you want to know what kind of mile, let's just look at the other qualifiers around, how the how the quarters and fractions went. You know, a Glare AM went a mile 59 and 4. I think. I think they said 59 and 4. No, I guess it's a little unfair. Dad, look at the It's a nice barn. Steph's horse used to be at that barn. Um... So a great mile from Laugh Now. I was super impressed with that horse. We're going to have a lot of fun with this guy, I think, for the next little while. He's going to do some good. He has to do some good. Just the way the way he blasted out of the gate, I was so surprised. He caught me off guard. He's He's gone from being a moody little bugger to actually liking his work. You know, I don't think he's going to... He's not a killer. We're going to have some fun with him, though. I like him. So Laugh Now was good. Um... James went with a Glare AM. Now, Glare, a Glare AM still showed residual tie-up. Now, this, this is going to be a problem for a while with this filly. It's breeding season. Clearly, it's becoming a problem. It was funny. Dominic had said to me, he goes, you know, if you look back last year, she was making breaks this time last year. The corks come off. The sun comes out. The mares are starting to get in season and cycle. And I think it's posing a real problem for us with a Glare AM. So, um, had made a break on Monday. You could have made an argument to me not the qualifier today. No, Dominic and I talked about it. And ultimately, um, we decided, yeah, she's going to qualify today. She went out and she qualified, did her work. James said, yeah, she's a little flat. We knew she would be. Um, but she did her work. So now we'll get her looked at by the vet, make sure everything's all right, get that AST, wallop that AST down, that muscle countdown, and school her next Friday, and then simulated race. And then we'll see how she is after. Now, you guys got to understand, managing horses like her that are tricky, and if she wasn't so fast, I can assure you I would not be managing her. She would have been gone. But she is just so fast that it's really hard. It, it, you just want to pull your hair out. It's like this. If she isn't between 95 and 100% perfect in every race, she is terrible. It's absolute feast or famine with a glare AM and it is really frustrating to deal with. I hope we get her in full and I hope she has a cold. Love of God, don't give us a filly. <laughs> what? But she is uh, she is a fast, fast, fast. Hey, Daddy. Mare. Sit down and be good. You, That's not how you sit. How many babies have we had? I think we've had four. We got another three. We have another couple coming. And then we went to, here's the thing, you know what sucked the most about a day like that is that you don't really get a true understanding or a true gauge of how a horse went. I told you laugh now was great. Two, three, last half of a minute, last quarter 29, doesn't sound real inspiring, but it is. It was a great mile and a bigger mile for a horse. Now you need to really take a look who High Gear No Fear was in with today. Take a look at the list. Take a look at his line. Take a look at his mile. Take a look at the video for yourself, and then you'll see he's ready to go now. Much, much better than last week. I think he's probably ready to trot 55, 56 at Mohawk on a good night. Not even quite to what we hoped he'd be or bottom four, but I think he's there. Uh, much, much closer than last week. I can tell you from sitting behind him, it was windy last week too. From sitting behind him last week to this week was a substantial, substantial improvement. So, high gear, no fear, like Harry, I'm coming off. And, you know, Logan Perk was not, he was in the Breeders' Crown last year, I believe. He was the winner of the qualifier in 2 1. That's what kind of wind we're dealing with today. I said to Harry, Harry goes, How was he? I said, Honestly, Harry, he was much, much, much better. He's ready to go. He said, Really? I said, Yes. Last week, I was the first one to tell Harry he's not ready yet. I thought we'd need at least one more schooler. And if we had one, it wouldn't hurt my feelings. But I think he's ready to go now. I think it, I think a schooler might be overkill. What I felt today was a horse that was ready to get at it. So, um, high gear, no fear. And it's been a while since I said that about this horse. He felt good today. So, a good, uh, a good qualifier from high gear, no fear. A very, very good qualifier from laugh now. A very mediocre qualifier for Aglarium. But she's around. She's qualified. It's done. Got some good training trips in at the barn. Got a great training trip in with great with Grace, um, with Grace Eldies Patrick and um, Crew Chief. So very impressed with those three days. So I guess all in all, for uh, uh, a week that obviously was marred 
with with the news surrounding Three Point Blue Chip. Um, you know, if we can take that that bad news away from this week, what's, we, what's the bad news? Uh, he injured himself. He cracked his foot. He's got to go have a surgery. So, uh, if we can take that away for a second and look at the stable for the stable for the entirety of the stable, it's been another great week at the stable. So, um, lots going on tonight. We get Sailor tonight. We got a number of horses at different racetracks both tomorrow and on Sunday. Uh, don't forget because I almost did. We also have our boy Kings County racing in Indiana on Saturday Saturday evening. So I didn't realize they were putting him in there. Kind of caught me off guard, but at the same token, looks like a great class, six horse field. Uh, he should do well in there. So good luck to Stacy and Brett and all of my partners with the Kings County group. No, we didn't send them, sell them. We sold them, to, sent them down to Stacy and Brett Miller. So with that, I'll let you guys go. It's, as I said, a pretty decent week. We're looking to uh, finish it off with a bang, obviously on the track, both training at the training center and with um, racing throughout the weekend. So good luck to everybody involved with the horses racing. Uh, great job last night by everybody. We were winners with Unbeatable Kemp and yes, Blue Bite Kempy. Kemp won. Unbeatable Kemp was a winner. Blue Bayou Dio was a winner. Don't believe me, just watch. Raced great. Uh, even World for Two, although he was six, that was a good mile for that horse and a good start to his sophomore campaign. Um, and Matt's MVP was poor, but we talked about that in last night's video. We're going to turn him out for a little while and let him grow up. So with that, I will sit, say uh, goodbye for the morning, for the afternoon, for the night. I will talk to you all very soon. I hope you're having a great day. Take care.